Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm Nicole Bagley, and today we are talking with Julie Christie from Togs in Business, and you are not going to want to miss this conversation. We start off talking about Instagram, but it goes a lot deeper than Instagram. It turns into a full-on conversation about building our connection with our clients and marketing in general. So if you have a pet photography business and you want to continue marketing and reach more clients, you don't want to miss this episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you're a pet photographer ready to make more money and start living a life by your design, you've come to the right place. And now, your host, pet photographer, travel addict, chocolate martini connoisseur, Nicole Begley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hair of the Dog podcast. Nicole here, and I am here with my special guest, Julie Christie from Togs and Business. Uh, You guys might be familiar with Julie. She was one of our guests for our most recent Hair of the Dog Summit, and uh, everybody loved her, her class, and I've heard such great things about her. So, Julie, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thanks, Nicole. I'm so happy to be here as well. Yay. Awesome. Yeah. So we were chatting about what we wanted to chat about. And one of the things that you suggested, which I thought was great, was trying to take control of Instagram. Because I know I've been guilty. And I know uh, a lot of my students and the hair of the dog community has been guilty of like, okay, I know I should be on here. I know I should be doing something with it, but I'm just posting some pictures of mine because I take pretty pictures. And but yeah, there's a whole lot more strategy to that than just posting a picture, right? (laughs) So much more, especially now. I mean, I think maybe photographers could have, I think they got away with that even five years ago. They got away Mm -hmm. with posting gorgeous work and maybe a, a caption that related to that photograph and the work would come in, you will not get away with that now. Unless, and you know, maybe if you are really well established and you've you've built up that following over the years, then you might still be getting away with that. And that's great. But if you are audience building right now, forget it. You have to yeah. have a content strategy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That seems so overwhelming. So where do people even start to figure that out? I think it starts, I suppose, with, I mean, even before you start thinking about clever content and more courageous content, you have to start thinking about your followers. Um, I think that there's a big problem in the photography industry when it comes to Instagram followings, because all of our followers are other photographers. (laughs) We're posting for other photographers and our comments are filled with comments from other photographers and our likes are all from other photographers. So who's buying from you? You know, unless you have something that you're selling to photographers, which is great if you do. But if not, if what your focus is, is to book photography clients, then how is that going to work for you? So it has to start there with your audience. And I think if any of your listeners are listening to this thinking, actually, that's a big problem that I have, then I really believe in having a big cull, a huge, brave cull of your followers and starting almost afresh, you know, getting rid of all the photographer followers, you know, keeping a few of your, maybe of your friends if you really want to, but get rid of followers who are never going to buy from you and be okay with a huge decrease in your likes. Huge. It will be huge, the decrease, but you will then see that you will actually get more meaningful comments and you'll start growing your audience in a meaningful way and you'll actually start getting inquiries through Instagram. Wow. That's a bold, that's a bold move. It that's is. scary. It is scary. <laughs> but if you think about it, a lot of people have been doing that recently on Instagram in different ways. So they've been involved in these follow loops and mm-hmm. engagement pods and things like that. And a lot of people have been coming out of that kind of Instagram practice. And they've been seeing huge decrease in the number of likes that they've been getting. But what they're seeing then is their engagement is going up, their conversion, you know, sorry, their engagement rate is going up. Mm -hmm. And so then are the, the meaningful DMs that they're getting and the clicks through to their website. So, you know, who cares if you have significantly less likes, if you're getting an inquiry every day or every couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess before we even start to figure out our content pillars, we need to figure out who it is we're talking to, Absolutely. which is figuring out that target 
market that target client, which I think a lot of people are hesitant to do because they think that, oh, my target clients, anyone with a dog yes. or <laughs> anyone that will hire me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, we both know that you define this target market. So you're talking to like one specific avatar, yeah. one type of person. Um, and you can still have outliers. Of but course. Figuring out who that is yep. actually just makes your marketing so much more effective. So much so. And then they're going to feel up more of a connection to you. So if you do say, okay, I'm happy to market to anyone who has a dog, it's not going to, you're not going to build that connection as much as you will if, for example, you say, okay, I'm all about dog owners who love to have their dog on the couch you know their dog is their best friend ever they don't go anywhere unless their dog can come with them you know you define it that way mm -hmm. and that means that your content can be all about that there's that that dog owner is going to completely relate to you yeah. connect with you and then think to themselves actually I want Nicole to photograph my dog because it sounds like she is passionate about dogs like mine and she won't mind if my dog misbehaves a little bit and you know that kind of thing so right. that connect yeah you I mean we're probably all fed up with being bashed around the head with ideal client stuff but right we know how important it is so yeah it definitely starts there you must know who your ideal client is yeah and there's so many there's so many ways to niche down even in, you know, you say I'm a pet photographer, but do you love photographing like little tiny kind of purse toy dogs? Yes. You know, or do you love photographing like the big dogs that are out hiking with their owners every weekend, going to the breweries? Like you can photograph either one, but if you really dial in your messaging and your marketing to one of those specific pieces or people... Yeah. Gosh, yeah, that's when I think you're going to start seeing so much more engagement. A hundred percent. I mean, there, there's too much choice now. You know, your ideal client has a lot of choice when they're going to choose their pet photographer. And if it's harder and harder to get that point of differentiation because there are so many dog photographers. Mm -hmm. So you're, sometimes your point of differentiation is your personality and your values and your sense of humor. So that person will then feel like, okay, if I'm going to spend time with any dog photographer, I want it to be Nicole because she seems to be, she seems to have the same kind of sense of humor as me. I think I'll enjoy hanging out with her. So it can boil down to that. Yeah. This brings up a great point because I think a a lot of pet photographers in particular love to hide. I mean, I bet if you did a poll of pet photographers profile pictures, eight out of 10 are going to be their dog or a camera in front of their face. Uh, <laughs> a lot of pet photographers are a little bit more introverted and don't necessarily want to have their personality out on social media or posting pictures of themselves. I mean, I say to my blue in my face, like your about page needs a picture of you and your face. <laughs> so much so I mean how it's such a personal thing hiring a photographer is a big big deal mm -hmm. because you're going to especially and a lot actually a lot of passionate dog owners are introverts too um, right. and a part I think a lot of people who love dogs even more than humans are even more so more likely to be introverted so they're going to really relate to that so you should be talking about being introverted and talk about your part sharing it doesn't mean you have to share what you had for dinner that day or right. what makes you cry you know <laughs> but sharing that you are introverted and sharing relatable quotes and memes about that is going to really appeal to your ideal client who is also the same the same way yeah it's yeah. a huge thing and not having your photograph I mean if if someone's going to make this hugely personal decision to book you as their photographer especially if they are introverted mm -hmm. and they're going to have to spend you know, an hour, two hours, maybe even more with you and their dog, they need to see your face. They need to see what you look like, whether you look like someone they're going to trust and even better, there should be some videos of you on mm -hmm. Facebook and so that they can make that connection and think, yep, I feel like I trust Nicole. I feel yeah. like this is someone I can work with and spend time with. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so important. And we're, you know, so blessed and 2021 that video is so easy to make. I mean, the yeah. quality of video for my phone is far superior to the quality of video for my computer, even that you just pop your little phone up there and make say hello. And 
you know, it, it feels so awkward at first. And I know some people just get, you know, oh my gosh, so in their head and we hate hearing our voice and we hate seeing ourselves and we're just so critical, but people don't see us that way. And quite frankly, if someone does, they're not going to hire you anyway. So don't worry about them. Exactly. Most people are not judging us the way we judge ourselves. So true. And I think that when we do that, when we hide behind that and we say, oh, I feel uncomfortable doing that. I feel awkward. I'm cringing. We're making it all about us, Mm -hmm. which is absolutely not how you should be running your business. You should be making it all about your client. And uh, that's a really good way to switch. You know, it's like flicking a switch. When you start going down that road, it's like a spiral of, oh, I feel so uncomfortable. Oh, I can't do it. I'm not good at this. You have to then flick the switch and think, okay, it's not about me. It's about this client who I know wants so much to have their dog photographed and they are wanting to make the right decision. I owe it to them. Mm -hmm. to get on camera and show them who I am. It's not about me. If you just keep saying that to yourself, it's not about me. Yeah, absolutely. And you can take it even further to say, you know, if I'm hiding, I'm actually doing a disservice to people because this person needs to get to know me to make a decision, you know, before their dog gets older and can't be photographed anymore. Like completely. By you not showing up on video, you're denying someone out there photographs of their dog. (laughs) So true. So, so true. Yeah. And there's so many people who are teetering on the brink of booking a dog photographer. Mm -hmm. And there's all these little things that are stopping them from doing it. Just barriers that are there. And that could be one of them. I just don't feel a strong enough connection to anyone. Mm -hmm. And so you appearing in your authentic as you're I'm not going to say authentic it's like the most buzzword ever (laughs) you appearing as yourself you know really raw just who you are you know don't worry about doing the hair and the makeup and putting nice clothes on just appear as you they are going to love it they're either going to love it or they're not and that's the thing isn't it if they love it they're going to be a great client for you yeah and if they're not they were never going to be your client anyway exactly there's truly nothing to lose with that. We all um, just have to get yeah. over ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. No one and cares. You know, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. And um, yeah, I think a lot of times people don't know what to say. So like, okay, yes. fine, Nicole, Julie, I hear you. Fine. I'll get on camera. But what the heck do I say? Um, so I know I always like to, you know, think about where my potential client is before booking and what possible objections they have. And in the pet photography world, the biggest one that I hear over and over again is, oh man, I would love photographs and my dog would never behave. You know, that they think that these dogs have to be complete and total obedient superstars to get their photos done. So that's something that we all need to be talking about till we're blue in the face. Yeah. Because that's, I think, the biggest thing holding back potential clients from booking. Oh my goodness, so much. And I, I have a dog and that's that would be my number one concern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you said there till we're blueing, blue in the face. And I think that's really important. Is, is And especially on Instagram, I think that photographers can be guilty of creating a post about this one subject and thinking, well, that's that one done. Right. And no, it's not, you know, a a tiny percentage of your followers saw it Uh an even tinier percentage of your followers read it and it can be repurposed in probably a hundred different ways. And you can tell a hundred different stories that touch on that. So you should be talking about it over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, these are the things too. People are like, oh man, content, this and that. Okay. Well, we know we have this objection of my dog's not going to be well behaved. Mm -hmm. Where do we need to put that? Okay, on our website, we can write a blog post about it. We can send social media to that blog post. We can take out a little chunk out of, you know, a sentence or two and make 8,000 Instagram posts about it. (laughs) We can do a story. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And and we don't have to recreate it. I think, yeah, they feel like I've said it once. I mean, I, I know, you know, you, uh, send out for your business as well to, to help photographers with marketing. You know, I do the same where I send out some emails when memberships open or something's going on. And, you know, it sometimes feels like, Oh my God, I've been sending out so many, but every single time when I'm done and I feel like I've just sent out like way too many emails, 
there's always someone that's like, wait, I didn't know that was open. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's, you guys are not sending too many emails or yeah. saying things too many times on Instagram because people are busy. And I think we think that yeah. as soon as we put something out there, everyone can see it and everyone's going to be judging and people are going to be saying, didn't she say something similar last week? No, they are not. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Yeah. And it might be, I mean, I'm sure everyone's had the experience too, where you've heard something over and over again, whether it's in school or you're learning a new technique or you've heard it five, six, seven times. But then on that eighth time, you're like, oh, I get it. I get it exactly. now. Exactly. Exactly. That might be what it takes to get over this objection of my dog's not well behaved or um, my dog has to be on leash or I'm not sure if I connect with you, you know, any of those yeah. things again and again. It makes your marketing so much easier. So for example, let's say your main marketing platform is to blog, to write blog posts. Yeah. So let's say you blog every two weeks, you can create that one blog post and that's then your marketing for two weeks. Because you yep. can create so many social media posts, like you said, from that. You could do a reel about that topic. You could do create a carousel about the topic. You can put together a quote, a, tell a story, a testimonial, all that stuff. But then you can send that information out to your email list. Mm -hmm. And you can party out on that content for as long as you want. It just makes your marketing so much easier when you think about how far you can go with that content, how mm -hmm. much mileage you can get from it. Yeah. And then the next year you can use it again. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. So hopefully we have people feeling a little bit like, okay, all right, I can do this a little can bit do more. This, yes. So with the pillars, I guess, or maybe do you have any suggestions on figuring out what the the happy medium of TMI, like too much information that I'm sharing yeah. or not enough information, but enough to feel a connection? Any advice yes. there? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I might, I might go on and on a bit. On That's okay. <laughs> so... I think it comes down to having a mixture of content. So like we said, all these pet photographers are sharing their gorgeous work. So you have to make sure that you're doing more than sharing an image with a caption to go with it. I would say that con the, the number of posts that you're posting. So we're talking about Instagram. If Instagram, I, I think a lot of photographers find it quite overwhelming. Maybe they're trying to post every day and it's too much for them. So maybe they're falling by the wayside there. And what I wanted to start by saying was find just a regularity that suits you. So if it means that you're only posting two or three times a week, that's fine as long as you can be consistent. Because what I see is are some photographers posting every day, but it's really mediocre content and oh, it's not uh -huh. going to get them any leads and it's not going to get them any bookings. So it's better to post maybe just a few times a week and put more effort into those posts and make them real high quality posts. So don't think you have to post every day. But also when you are posting, you want to be thinking about a magnetic, what I would call a magnetic content strategy. So you're not pushing yourself on people. You're actually producing content that brings people to you. They're actually coming further and further into your world, thinking Nicole is someone to be liked, trusted. I actually think I might reach out to Nicole now. So you want that content to be magnetic. And that's why just sharing your images and a caption to go along with them is not going to do it. You're not going to get people saving your posts, which is really huge now. And we'll, we'll talk about that hopefully a little bit is that savability, savable posts on Instagram is definitely the new thing. You have to make sure you're creating posts that people will save because Instagram will love you for it. So I think you, it's important that you have this mixture of content. So content that connects with your ideal client, content that engages them. So really encourages them to comment, content that establishes you as an expert. So that's authority content. And then of course, you have to have your promotional content where you're just directly selling because that's okay. It's like when you talked <laughs> about your emails and uh -huh. you, you send out a lot of educational emails, really helpful emails. So then by the time someone gets one of your selling emails, you're 
directly promotional emails, they're okay with it because you've mm-hmm. served them. And it's the same with Instagram. Make sure you're serving and serving and serving. And then by the time you sell, they are ready to hear it. They're okay to hear it because you've helped them so much. But alongside that mixture of content, you need to have content pillars. So you need to know what are the key topics that you're going to post about on your Instagram account and just stick with them. So let's say we're talking about dog photographers here. We're talking to dog Uh photographers here. So of course it makes sense to talk about dog photography and that's that's you um, showing how good you are as a dog photographer. But what other things are you going to talk about? Because if you think, let's say you've got a thousand Instagram followers, how many of them are looking for a dog photographer at that very moment? Not many. Uh So if you're only posting about dog photography, you're not really serving the majority of your followers. You have to keep them engaged. So let's say that might be for one dog photographer, they decide, okay, one of my content pillars is dog photography, but one of my other ones is going to be health and well-being because I'm really into that and my my ideal client is very passionate about that. Maybe the other thing might be, you know, funny dog stuff. Who doesn't love the funny dog stuff? You know, right. all the videos, all the images, all the memes. So, so I you always can... say we're so lucky that we're not accountants. Oh, I mean, so much. pet photographers. Share funny dog videos. <laughs> Constant. You're just basically gifted with so much great stuff. So you could be curating the very best of that stuff. That could be one of your content pillars. Another one might be dog training and tips and tricks and things like that. Yeah. Or, but an, a really good one for dog photographers t- to have as a content pillar is local mm-hmm. dog related information. So, you know, dog friendly, everything, great dog walks to try. This mm-hmm. new restaurant's just opened up and it's dog friendly. You know, that's the kind of stuff people will save and will really appreciate. So get your content pillars sorted, maybe three or four of them, and then have a nice mixture of posts throughout the week. So you're going to have your connection posts, which is These are the posts that really allow your audience to feel that connection to you because like, do you know, I'm going to be repeating myself here. We've already talked about how important that is because they will feel like you're someone that they will want to spend time Uh with. So sharing the values that you hold close, the sense of humor that you have, opinions that you have about some vulnerabilities, if you're brave enough, all that kind of stuff. So I don't do this as much on Instagram. So my business is totally different from a photography business and I'm training other, I'm helping other photographers with their marketing. So I actually don't do a lot of connection posts. I don't know if you do, Nicole. Not as many as I should. So that's actually been one of my goals is this past year is just for me to be more involved and just show up more on Instagram with the stories yeah. and, and, you know, things like that, just to make connections. And quite frankly, most of us as pet photographers have some sort of animal. So yeah. a lot of my stories are my horse or my dog or my yes, cat. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And I try to show my face a little bit more, but I, I could be better for sure. And it's so, it's so important for photographers because you have a personal brand. So if mm-hmm. you have a personal brand on Instagram, you have to show up on your feet you have to because people have to get to know you. They have to feel that connection so that they pick up the phone and book you this personal, personal service. I don't do a lot of that because I I am not trying to build a personal brand. I'm trying mm-hmm. to very much build a, a business brand right. and I, I don't want my business to be about me. So, but for photographers, connections massive. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this can be, so every week having something about connection, something brilliant that you just bought for your dog with a photo or a video, fun facts about you. You should be sharing things like that quite often. A story from your day, what you're currently obsessed with watching on TV or a podcast Mm -hmm. you're listening to, just stuff like that is going to help them connect and say, yeah, I would like to spend time with this person. But then you have to have your engagement stuff. So connection and engagement can cross over. But if you think, okay, today I'm going to think of a connection post, you're going to see the difference quite quickly. But with engagement, this is when you're trying to get the comments. So this is going to, along with your connection posts, this is going to boost your visibility. These are not necessarily going to bring in inquiries Uh and leads and bookings. But it's a really important part of the strategy for when you do post something that brings in the leads and the bookings. So you boost your visibility 
for a little while when you're in visibility mode, you're boosting, you're posting a lot of connection stuff, a lot of engagement stuff, and then boom, you come in with a, an authority post or a promotional post and the algorithm is in your favor because mm -hmm. you've been posting stuff that people really like to engage with and they like to comment, um, like and comment on. And then you'll bring in something of very, of high value that you want people to see, you want the right people to see, and you have your serious call to action on those. So when we're talking about engagement, we're, I think everyone will know the kind of things that we're talking about there. But for example, maybe asking your audience to choose between two things, you know, the classic yeah, black uh -huh. and white or color. What do you guys prefer? I know that's an oldie, but it seems to still work. People um, love to have their opinions they heard. They do. Yeah, they really do. But you have to make it easy. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of photographers not asking it in the first line of the caption. If you mm. don't ask the question in the first line of the caption, it won't be answered. People will not see it. So you, gotcha. ask, you ask it in the first line and then you repeat your question in the last line. Uh -huh. But you can also get them. To, it can be like pre-marketing posts as well. So for example, let's say you're planning a day of shoots in a certain location. Maybe you're doing some water shoots with dogs. And ahead of that, you could be scouting for locations and you could say, guys, you have to help me. What's your location? Do you prefer this one or this one? Or which piece of wall art? You know, I'm adding a product to my mm -hmm. offerings. Which wall art do you prefer? This one or this one? And where would you hang this here or here? You know, what should my next offer be? That should be happening all the time. But also the really simple questions, you know, dogs on the couch or not? You know, mm -hmm. do you take your dog everywhere or do you not? Do you feed your dog raw? You know, just yeah. really simple questions to get people offering opinions and make it easy. Don't make them think. Mm -hmm. Just ask them the simplest questions so that they can get involved without having to go, mm, don't, don't know what I really right. think about this. Just let them procrastinate on your post and get involved mm -hmm. with it. So yeah, you can have, so on, on you go. No, no, I was just going to say one really easy thing to ask is uh, what your dog's like uh, nickname is. I mean, people yeah. love to share like, here's Zoe. It's good. Zoe's a fish. Good. You know, all these different, <laughs> all these different names that she has. And then yeah. what's your dog's that's name? Or what's one. your dog's nickname? Uh, that's so fun funny because I think our dog has about 10 of those. So yeah, yeah exactly. that I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it could be another question of, do you make up songs about your dog? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I have like every single song we actually make up about the cat. Actually, our cat that died years ago, we still make up new songs oh, about her. <laughs> that's so, yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. That is, And there's so much personality in that. And you can really mm -hmm. tell a lot from these little songs that people make up or the nicknames that they give their pets right. you can tell a lot about who that person is and their character yeah. from that so I think those kind of questions are perfect but yeah. then something else that's great for engagement posts is when you tag other businesses so mm -hmm. you might and I think when people do this I often see it done in a really generic kind of lukewarm way and it doesn't seem to work for them. So I've had people say to me, look, I, you know, I try and tag people and say nice things about them or engage on their posts and I just don't, it's not reciprocated. And then when I see what they wrote, I'm like, well, there wasn't much effort put into that. Right. You, know, you have to make people feel seen, really seen. So I think if you're going to put together an engagement post where you're tagging another pet related business. You have to genuinely do your research or go and visit that business and get to know that person and then write a post that makes them go, oh my goodness, that is special actually. She really took time to write something genuine and it's very true and I feel okay. like she understands me. That will be reciprocated and remembered. Yeah. You know? So be, that's why I'm saying take the time Mm -hmm. Don't try and just put together a two minute post, really take the time. And if that means posting less regularly, I think that's fine. And these are all the, the posts that you want to do when you're boosting your visibility. So if you've got something you want to sell, get lots of those posts out and then boom in with your authority stuff and your promotion stuff. And this is the stuff that's going to get saved. Mm -hmm. And Right now on Instagram, there's just nothing like putting together a post that is going to get saved by your followers. And the minute Instagram sees that your post is being saved, it the algorithm just boosts in your favor because you have clearly added value to the platform. Mm -hmm. So it's crucial that 
you guys go into your analytics and look at how many of your posts are getting saved. And if none of them are getting saved, it's time for a real rethink. We need better posts. So that's where the authority posts come in. It's it's really, it's mainly authority posts that get saved. So these are the ones that are going to take you a bit longer to do a lot more thought involved, but these are the ones that are going to bring you DMs, links to your uh, clicks throughs to your website. They're going to bring in the leads and the and the inquiries because they're going to put you up here as an expert. People are going to see them, appreciate them, hopefully save them to come back to later. And every time they see one of these posts, they're thinking, "Wow, she's amazing. That really helped me today." Or that makes a lot of sense to me. She's educated me. She's served me. She's helped me. And you you become over time, someone to be followed and someone to be respected and the go-to person if they ever need a photographer. Yeah. So those authority, authority posts, would they be kind of like teaching on those pillars? So maybe it's yes. a post about, um, Hey, have you been wanting to take a picture of your dog in your house? Look set up here with their face towards the window yes. or, you know, food or training. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have to, you have to create authority posts for the followers who are thinking about booking a dog mm-hmm. photographer. But you have to also create authority posts for those who are not really thinking about Mm -hmm. booking a photographer right now, but might be soon. So yeah, some of them will be exactly like you said, photography tips behind the scenes of you shooting or editing Mm -hmm. or processing orders. That's you showing yourself as an expert, all of that good stuff before and after pictures, you know, so you're showing, look what I do, you know, here's Mm -hmm. what, here's what comes out of the camera, but you know, maybe it's the dog with the leash on Mm -hmm. and then you've Mm -hmm. magically made it disappear or a photo that your client took of their dog on the same day and your photos uh of the dog, you know, that kind of stuff is authority as well. That's a good one. Definitely. And so easy to do. And posing tips, um, location tips, photography tips, behavior tips, all that stuff. But then, like you said, the other content pillars, think about those and what can, how can you become an authority in those as well? So it doesn't matter if you're not one right now, you know, you will become one super quick. So become an expert in what's happening in the local area when it comes to dogs, you know, the businesses that are opening up. The, the best walks, every uh, the places that are dog friendly, all that stuff. So that people are seeing a post, like maybe it's a list of the best dog friendly hotels in the area. Right. That is something that people will save to come back to later, especially if they always want to take their dog on holidays mm-hmm. and things with them. So th- I would be suggesting that people are producing at least one savable Instagram post per week. One that they think would, you have to put yourself in your ideal client's shoes. Would you save it Mm -hmm. if you were them? Would would you be scrolling Instagram and think that's something I'm going to save for later because you will get the most follows from that. You will get the most DMs and inquiries from a post like that. So yes, content pillars 100% and think savable content. Usually it's going to come from the the blog posts that you're mm-hmm. writing or the videos yeah. you're creating. I was going to say that list of, you know, the 10 best dog-friendly hotels in my area or hikes or breweries or wineries yes. or restaurants or insert activity here. Those put on your blog too because people are probably going to be googling that and how totally. many how many lists are there really are going to be on that front page? So Definitely. people that weren't even necessarily looking are now introduced to you in your business. Yep. So, yeah. And think how many different posts you could create just from that piece of content. So you mm-hmm. could have, if it was 10, a list of 10, you could deal with each of them individually in mm-hmm. a post. So that's 10 posts. You could do a quick reel where you just rhyme them off. Mm -hmm. with some music behind you or something. You could do a carousel with, you know, the text graphic in the front and then all the recommendations behind it. The list goes on and on and on the different posts that you could create. So I would suggest that if you're putting together a blog post like that, that at the very same time, you then jot down all the Instagram ideas that come Mm -hmm. from it. And they could see you through, I mean, that could be going on for six months, you know, Mm -hmm. if you spread them out. So that's the kind of stuff that will really help to, you're not going to get 
massive amounts of likes on Mm -hmm. posts like this. And this is the thing that I think photographers find hard is they change up their Instagram strategy and they'll say to me, but Julie, my likes have just hit the floor. You know, I put a post like that out and I get like 10 likes, but it's not about the likes. It's about Mm -hmm. one person seeing it and thinking, I'm going to get in touch with this person or this this photographer's now on my radar. So you have to mix it up. You have to make sure that you're just you're not just showing these photos. You're you're actually serving people on Instagram yeah. as well. And that yeah. means they're then primed for the fourth type of post, which is your promotional post. And the the authority posts and the promotion posts, that's where you want to have your big call to action ev- almost every single time. And I would suggest that's either, you know, go between. So, you know, are we going to work together now or what? Send me a DM. Mm-hmm. Be really direct. Send me a DM. Mm-hmm. Or by PS, have you seen that I'm running this special offer right now. Click the link in the bio. So just every single time. And I would say I've been experimenting recently with two calls. And this is like a cardinal sin. I'm always saying one call to action. Right, right. But um, I follow this girl who's amazing, Vanessa Lau. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. Uh She's fantastic. And she's been experimenting with two calls to action on her engagement and connection posts. So, you know, when we talked about the connection posts and the engagement posts, we were talking about those being visibility boosters. So that's there for, you know, boosting your vis- visibility to get you up in the algorithm so that you can then say, um, share your authority posts and your mm-hmm. promotion posts. And usually with your connection posts and your engagement posts, your call to action will be, what do you think? Let me know in the comments or save this for later or tag someone you'll know or double tap and that kind of thing. Yeah. So what, but what you can do with those, you can experiment with this is have two. So do your primary call to action, which is, do you have a suggestion or what do you think? Let me know in the comments and then experiment with a PS. Yeah. So it comes after PS. Do you know that I have such and such going on or PS, I only have two slots left in June. Uh huh. So when it comes to engagement and connection, I would encourage you to experiment with two two calls to action. But when it wow. comes to your promotion yeah. posts and your authority posts, I would almost always have one Let's call to one. action and make it your big one. Yeah. 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 Oh, all sorts of crazy stuff come out. <laughs> Call your whole Instagram and two calls to action. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, it's so the whole promotion th- thing, though, I think it's worth talking about the promotion posts because yes. we're not we're not selling. I don't think right. people are selling directly enough on Instagram. Yeah. I don't see them actually calling people to book them or to get in touch. It's like almost an apology. They're I, so I apologetic about it, you know, oh, I hate to sell, but mm-hmm. instead of knowing people are there waiting, maybe trying to make the right decision and just helping them with it. Yeah. So if you've if you've been pushing out this great relatable content, connection content, asking questions and getting comments, and then serving, above all, serving with your authority posts, then make sure you're letting people know how to work with you really mm-hmm. directly. Um, and for me, I think, you know, of course, sharing testimonials is great, but making sure you're sharing the testimonial and then talking about the benefit to Mm -hmm. this, you know, your follower who might be reading it, the benefit to them if they book you, you know, what this could be them. You have to make sure you're teaming it with a caption that really gets into their world or maybe a post about just about your availability. That's all Mm -hmm. it's about, you know. Okay, guys, letting you know if you're on the fence, you need to get moving because I am nearly booked out. Let them know that. Mm -hmm. And and maybe just the benefit post as well about why, what is it they're going to get because they work with you. Yeah, that benefits a great thing to to mention too, because I think sometimes people get stuck on the features of, hey, my pet photography session includes one hour of shooting time and 30 final images for you to choose from and an in-person ordering a session. But people don't necessarily care about the features. What are the benefits? Yes. So to speak to that emotional connection, to share a testimonial of somebody that has had a great experience and they now have these things to remind them of their relationship with their dog for the rest of their life yep. and then speak to that. 
that's absolutely where where we make that real connection and we actually move people to take action because i think one of the hardest things to do from pet photography marketing perspective is there's no event tied to a session where a wedding photographer, oh, I'm getting married on October 14th. So I need a wedding photographer that day yes. or a newborn. Like there's a birth date, like high school senior, they're graduating high school, even family photography. It's like, yeah. oh, before they graduate elementary school, you should get a family photo taken. But man, pets, it's either a puppy or unfortunately when the dog's older, but to, Isn't it sad? yeah, you have to try to like find these other ways to get people over the hump when their dog's still young and healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree yeah. more. Definitely. I love it. And so the, with those, oh, sorry, ahead. I was just going to talk about the call to action because yeah. that's something that I should have mentioned earlier is another thing I see photographers doing on Instagram is that bio link right which drives me mad <laughs> the bio link is either their home page which really drives me mad mm -hmm. or it's a link tree with like 5000 links <laughs> so if you have a link in your bio it needs that's your money maker that yeah. is your money maker link and if you send them to your home page they're gone you, you're mm -hmm. going to lose them they're going to just go down a big rabbit hole. If you send them to a link tree and there are six or seven different things they can click on, a confused mind says no and they will be gone. Mm -hmm. You need to think, what's my priority right now? And you put that very specific link in your bio. So for me, that is always about getting leads. I would prefer to get leads through my Instagram bio link because you and I know that email's where it's at, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Emails where the sales happen, and that's the same for photographers, because a very tiny percentage of your followers are going to see your posts, whereas mm -hmm. maybe 20, 30 percent of your email subscribers are going to open your email. It, there's just no contest that you have to get them onto your email list. So I see a lot of photographers sending people via in, from Instagram to either their homepage or this crazy link tree with all mm -hmm. these links instead of getting people onto their email list where they can then nurture them with mm -hmm. amazing emails and get them to book. Yeah. So that is what I would be putting into the bio. Yeah. Would that link then go to like a landing page? So it basically yeah. would go to just a page that says, Hey, thanks so much for being here. Put in your email address here and you'll get XYZ. Absolutely. So it yeah. can be whatever. I mean, it has to suit that photographer, doesn't it? Whatever. I mean, if they have an amazing lead magnet, like an mm -hmm. amazing freebie that they know works, a lot of lead magnets don't work. But if you have right. a lead magnet that's successful and people seem to be loving it, then that should be your Instagram bio link for at least a little while to see what mm -hmm. happens you know, download this and get this. What do they, what's in it for them to download it? Or if you actually send amazing emails that are worth opting into. So for example, if you're a dog photographer who also sends weekly emails about everything local and dog related, mm -hmm. I'm going to opt into that. I'm a mm -hmm. dog owner. I'm an obsessed dog owner. And if I know someone is providing weekly information about everything that's going on in my local area to do that I could do with my dog or enjoy with my dog, I am opting into that email list. I'm going mm -hmm. to love it. And of course, that's the photographer I'm going to book. So that can be your lead magnet. Yeah. Or some photographers might use their pricing, you know, down up if you want thinking about working with me, click here to download my pricing and packages. And oh, I would only recommend that one if you have a really good email nurture sequence attached mm -hmm. to it, because you don't want to give people your pricing and then just set like, them adrift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have to <laughs> make sure you then me? nurture them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is so good. So during that promotional time, two questions. During the actual like more heavy duty promotion time, would you change that bio link to go directly to a booking page? So I... It, I suppose it depends. It really depends on the kind of photographer you are and how you run your business. Mm -hmm. So I like to run like a campaign driven business. I like to have one campaign every quarter that I'm focused mm -hmm. on. And that's what I recommend to the photographers that I work with is that they're heavily focused on one thing per quarter. So that might be 
I mean, for a wedding photographer, for example, that might be, okay, I'm totally focused on booking next summer, next Mm -hmm. summer's wedding. For a dog photographer, maybe they have this amazing event that they're going to be doing in the summer where they're, they're shooting, you know, in several different locations. Maybe there's some water shoots that they're doing or fields or, you you know, the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So having a focus like that works, or if you are someone who really just wants to get leads, which is another thing Mm -hmm. I I'm all about, then I I would (laughs) have a different lead magnet every quarter. So for Mm -hmm. example, a five day challenge for one quarter, and then the next quarter might be an amazing freebie, the PDF freebie that you've put together. The next quarter might be, might be your pricing and packaging. So you're experimenting with different ways of different lead generation Mm -hmm. ideas. And then every now, of course, you're going to have little like mini campaigns here and there. Maybe you do um, like, like a, a Mother's Day, a day mother, yeah. yeah, a Mother's Day mm-hmm. event or something, you know, moms and their dogs or, but I'm talking about a more meaty, big mm-hmm. campaign. So yeah, I would, my, my link in my bio is attached to whatever campaign I'm running that quarter. And then every now and again, I might change it. If I'm running a giveaway, I'll change it for mm-hmm. a week or so. And, and I would recommend exactly the same for photographers. So what is your focus right now? Is it getting people onto your email list? That's the link that should be in your bio. Mm-hmm. And that's when you're sharing your authority posts, have a kind of tenuous link to that at least so that you can then say, want more l- amazing stuff like this, make sure you grab my X, check mm-hmm. the link in the bio. So it's a more specific call to action. And yes, okay, they're not going to see everything you have to offer and everything that you do, but actually you will get more inquiries and more leads because it's specific. Mm-hmm. Yes, 100%. Because if they see all the things, I see this a lot of times too. I go to a photographer's website and it's like, here's my six different sessions I offer. Yeah. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No one, they're going to have no idea what's the right one for them. So they're just going to go away. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Keeping it streamlined. And, and you and I are on the same page. I always tell my students, like we need to focus on two things in your business, leads and sales. Like yeah. that, that is what the business is built on. And if you don't want to focus on those, then, well, maybe we just have a hobby, but you need leads to get yeah. to the sales. Gosh, this has been so good. Oh, I do have one other question for okay. um, that Instagram as far as how often do you go into that promotion phase? So I would say, I mean, I would be doing more connection and engagement posts when you are building up to, it It really depends. So I've, yeah. I've got kind of two answers for this. <laughs> if you are a more campaign driven photographer, so mm-hmm. Um, This is how I always ran my photography business was I would build up to like an almost an open cart period where Mm -hmm. I was booking, booking, booking. So I was kind of building a list, building a list, building a list up until summer and then saying, right, I'm releasing my summer availability. Let's go for it. Go, go, go. And then I would do the same for um, autumn. And then I would do my I would do some workshops and I would change it to that. And then I would do the same for spring. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was about let's engage and connect and engage and connect and hardly ever really. Um, I would do some PS, add your name to my waiting list. Mm-hmm. I'll soon be releasing such and such. And then during that promotional period, it would be, you know, a couple, I, like mostly authority and promotion posts mm-hmm. with a spattering of engagement and connection. But if you're not a campaign driven photographer and you're kind of just always just booking, you know, you're booking one client at a Mm -hmm. time. So I like to book multiple clients Mm -hmm. at once so that I can (laughs) then go, right, that's summer taken care of. Now we're on to the next one. Yeah. But if you're a photographer who likes just to have that kind of drip of clients coming in, you know, every week, then really you would be just doing connection, engagement, promotion, authority, connection, engagement, mm-hmm. really just alternate them like that. Mm-hmm. So it okay. does depend. Yeah. Does that absolutely. make sense? It does. It does. Okay. Gosh, this has been so, so good and eye opening. And I think uh, a lot of people will have gotten a lot of really great ideas of how to look at their Instagram a little bit differently. And hopefully they will show up and do some videos and those engagements and, you know, test out some of the stories and reels and all those new little features on Instagram to be able to, to get a little bit more engagement and go for those saves. So thank you so much for being here. Do you have any kind of last 
last words of encouragement for all those pet photographers out there that might still be like, oh my gosh, I'm still feeling a little overwhelmed by Instagram. Yes, I do. When you change things up, when you change up your Instagram strategy, you're going to be crap at it. And I, it's just, that's what's going to happen. We're always really rubbish at something when we first start or where we change. So just accept that you are going to be a bit crap at it and just do it anyway. You know, that's it's no one cares, hardly anyone's seeing it. So just go for it. I really would just say go for it. Um, don't think about how you appear to others and how many likes you're getting. Just think about that one person that like we talked about that ideal mm-hmm. client. Am I serving that person? If so, that's all that matters. That's, yeah. it. that's it. And please do follow me on Instagram as well. Let's connect there. I'm, I'm at Togs and Business. Perfect. And um, let us know where they can find you online as well. Is it just togsandbusiness.com? It is. Yes, okay, it is. Perfect. And actually, if any of your listeners are interested in the whole campaign, you know, being a campaign led photographer, I do have a free workshop at the moment, which is oh, great. togsandbusiness.com forward slash campaign class. Okay, perfect. We'll link that up in the show notes. And um, yeah, you guys definitely stick around to the end of this. I will let you know exactly what the URL for the show notes is. And yeah, Julie, thank you again for being here with us. We really enjoyed this conversation and uh, have a great week and hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. I've loved it. Hope I didn't talk too much. (laughs) No, not at all. It was so good. It was all good information. (laughs) Great. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks for listening to the Hair of the Dog podcast. If you want to check out the show notes for access to any of the links that we shared from this episode, as well as any additional resources, this was episode number 73. So simply go to www.hairofthedogacademy.com slash 73. Thanks for listening to this episode of Hair of the Dog podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please take a minute to leave a review. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our upcoming episodes. One last thing. If you are ready to dive into more resources, head over to our website at www.hairofthedogacademy.com. Thanks for being a part of this pet photography community.